So, if you want to see how I made this crispy skin with this fall off the bone chicken, keep on watching. Start this recipe off. You want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees. Then you want to get your chicken ready. So you want to use some dark meat in this recipe, which is like the legs and the thighs. So you could just buy some skinless chicken thighs or whichever part you want to get. I wouldn't use breast because we're going to be braising this chicken. When I went to the store, they didn't have any just boneless skinless chicken thighs. What they had was these thighs and legs still joined with the skin on. In Austria anyway, when you buy bone in chicken thighs, there's always this bone here. That's just how they butcher them over here. So I just went ahead and removed that. And then while I was removing that, I thought, I'm gonna take the skin off as well. When you braise the chicken, you don't really wanna have the skin on because this skin will get all rubbery and it'll just be kind of gross. So I went ahead and removed the skin. And since I got the oven running, I'm gonna be getting these nice and crispy. And then we'll put these on top as a nice little crunchy accompaniment to our apricot chicken. We're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to the next step. But first I'm gonna wash my hands. So the next step is, we're gonna put some flour on the chicken before we get it in there. This will help thicken the sauce uh, as it cooks there. So I've just got some all purpose flour in the bowl there. And I've got some fresh cracked pepper. And we're gonna put some salt in there as well. So go ahead and just get that little lightly mixed up. Then it's just simple. You can uh, just grab a bit of the flour. Dust the chicken, don't have to worry about getting too much. And I'm gonna be braising in this dish as well, so uh, you know, a little bit of extra flour in the bowl is gonna be okay. Just make sure you don't get too much in there, obviously. Once you've got them nicely covered like that, we'll put the flour aside. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little extra sprinkle of salt, just to make sure the final dish is nicely seasoned. Then we're gonna get our container here. And here I've also got some apricot nectar, which is just apricot juice. As always, all the amounts and ingredients are gonna be on the website, traditionalbutnot.com. So to your apricot juice, you're gonna add a packet of onion soup. Essentially any brand's gonna work. It's just there to add a bit of extra flavor. You wanna go ahead and just get that kind of mixed in. And I just looked at the package, I'm gonna need more liquid. Just go ahead and get that all mixed in and then pour it into the dish with the chicken. We'll get that all nestled in. Make sure the chicken's nicely in there. Alrighty, once you've got your liquids, I'll go on in with your chicken. I've just gone ahead and I've got two pieces of foil here. Whenever I'm covering something like this and I wanna braise it, I always put two pieces of foil on there. Making sure we get a nice tight seal and none of the uh, liquid evaporates. Once you've got your uh, chicken nicely sealed up there, we're gonna bung it in the oven. To get the chicken sinks ready, you wanna get a bigger pan and a little pan that's gonna fit in inside of it. Just got some parchment paper here. The best way to get these into the dish is to just get the piece and scrunch it up. And you unscrunch it, much easier to get into your pans, just like that. Okay, then you wanna grab your, uh, your chicken skins here, and you wanna lay them out flat. Once you've painstakingly laid them out, you just wanna hit the top of them with a bit of salt. Once you've given them a good dose of salt, another piece of parchment paper, straight on top, and your dish on top of that. You wanna keep this dish on top, and that'll stop the chicken skin from curling up and getting all uh, you know scrunched up, because you wanna keep it nice and flat. And we'll get a nice little crispy shard. We're gonna bung this in the oven with the, uh, with the chicken that's braising, but we're gonna put this underneath the chicken. So you want it on the bottom. You don't want it up, up top. It starts to nicely render this chicken skin out. Next thing you wanna do is peel your potatoes ready for the mashed potato. Pretty sure everyone knows how to peel a potato. You're just gonna peel it. Then you wanna cut the potato down into smaller pieces. Bung them in your pot. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them knocked out. Once you got all your potatoes in your, in your pot, you wanna fill it up with some nice fresh water and you're gonna add some salt. You probably could get a spoon in there and mix it around, but I don't have one on hand, so I'm just gonna, you know, give a little mix like that. We're gonna bung a lid on this, and we're gonna set it on the stove, and we're gonna let it boil. So it's been about 45 minutes in the oven, and I've just taken it out. I just wanna give it a quick check to see where we're at. I've got my little instant reading thermometer here. I just wanna check the chicken, and we're right at 81 degrees. Some of them a little more. Okay, this is the perfect temperature. At this point, we're gonna stick it back in the oven, just for about another 15 minutes or so, uncovered, and we just want to get a nice bit of color on top of the chicken there. We're gonna bung it back in the oven, and then we'll be back in about 15 minutes. So I've just taken the chicken out, as you would have already just seen, to uh, have a look, and now I've just taken the skin out of the oven, and we're gonna have a little check on that. This is looking absolutely amazing right now. It's not crispy. The good thing with the chicken skin is, because of how we've got it set up with the parchment paper and the piece on top, we can just leave that in the oven like that, and it's probably not gonna change within the next 15 minutes or so while the chicken finishes up. But as soon as we take the chicken out and we finish that, we'll come back to the next step on this, which will be removing all that, putting it up nice and high to the element, and keeping a very good eye on it, and getting it nice and crispy. Once you've got a little bit of color on top like that, your chicken's ready. So you just wanna go ahead and plop it out onto a plate. 
And we're going to let this rest for a minute. And we're going to transfer this liquid here, the braising liquid, to a pot. And we're just going to reduce it down a little bit till it gets a nicer, bit of a thicker consistency. And then we'll also taste for seasoning. Also, the foil from before that we had on top of the pan, we're just going to use that to uh, put over the top to keep this a little bit warmer while we, uh, while we reduce this sauce down. So we're going to reduce this a little bit more. Now you don't want to strain it once you put it in here because you still want the onion in any chunks. Uh, also, once we get it reduced, we'll add some more salt because uh, I've had a little taste and it's, it's going to need a little bit more, but we'll get it reduced first. We've just taken the chicken out and now it's time to give a little attention to the chicken skin, which is looking absolutely amazing. That is super hot. So with this chicken skin, we're going to want to take it off of the uh, parchment paper and we're going to stick it on a little rack. And then why it rests on the rack, it's going to crisp it up a lot. We're just going to, simple enough, transfer it over onto this rack here. Now, this is actually my first time crispening up the chicken skin. And it's got a lot uh, crispier than I thought it would have at this stage. So, I'm just going to let it hang out on this rack here. And then we'll come back and we'll check on it once we're nearly ready to plate up. And we'll see if we need to just stick it in the oven to finish it off for, uh, you know, five minutes or so. That didn't take too long on the stove. Because of the flour that we put on the chicken before that was in the pan, it thickened up quite uh, nicely here. This is not meant to be super thick. It's still meant to be a nice fluid sauce. So um, as you can see here, it kind of leaves a little bit of a trail. That's exactly what you want because it will tighten up a little bit more as we let it sit here while we finish off the rest of the dish. So I'm just going to give it a little taste for seasoning. Definitely needs a little bit more salt. So we'll go ahead and we'll add some of that. So I've just went ahead and added a little bit of salt to taste. And uh, that's exactly how I want it. So we're going to set this aside and then we're going to finish off with the mash. So I've just pulled my potatoes off the stove and they're nice and tender. So we're going to go ahead and get these strained off and then we'll give them a mash. So I've got a bowl here and simple enough, I'm just going to load the potatoes into the, into the ricer, squeeze them straight into the bowl. With the uh, washing machine on its last spin cycle, I uh, gently heated some butter and cream over the, on the stove and I'm going to pour it all into my mashed potatoes. So we'll get it all dumped in there and we're going to get it nicely mixed in. All that lovely buttery creamy goodness. All stirred into the potatoes. Also at this point, we need to give it some seasoning. When you're making your mashed potato, if you want nice silky smooth mashed potato, you have to use the right variety of potato, which this is not, but it still tastes damn good. So I've already tasted it for seasoning and it's exactly where I want it. Now it's time to plate up. Apricot chicken was a little bit of a childhood favorite of mine. And since I've moved here to Austria, I think I've made it a whole of one time, a long time ago. So, I'm kind of excited for it. Mashed potatoes, creamy chicken, mmm. For such few ingredients, it kind of packs a bit of a punch. That uh, packet of onion soup does a lot of the heavy lifting, but uh, still, it's a tasty, tasty dish.